Hey folks, if you're familiar with the construction of my animatronic Raven kits, uh, you'll know that the servos and the body coverings are all built around a mechanical structure that is mainly made of laser cut acrylic parts. And for the past several years since I started making those, I've been sending those parts out to be made by other people or their companies or friends who have laser cutters. But uh, thanks to the folks at Ohm Tech Lasers, I have a laser cutter in house now. So um, I'm hoping that this will be now a new way for me to make the Raven kits and the upcoming animatronic parrot kits, which will be an all new design uh, that I hope to make on this new Ohm Tech laser. This machine is called the Polar. It's a 50 watt desktop CO2 laser. And um, if you don't really know what that means, that's okay. I don't quite understand it all either. But I think that this is going to be a really great tool to have around. I am an artist. I have some technical knowledge. I do a lot of 3D printing and 3D scanning, but uh, I've never dealt with a laser. So this is going to be kind of interesting. And frankly, from the bit of research that I have done on them, it's a little intimidating. So I'm hoping that we find out that it's actually not so bad, but uh, either way, <laughs> I'll let you know. So the first thing that I wanna do is just get this set up and uh, figure out the basics. They've provided me with some cardboard and some eighth inch acrylic to test out. I think that'll be a great place to start. And if all goes well, I'm hoping today to wrap up by cutting out one of the sets of parts for my animatronic Raven kits out of quarter inch acrylic, which I've been advised is probably the top end of what you would reasonably want to cut on this, but should be no problem. Now, I don't know where I want this to eventually live in my little garage shop here, so I don't want to start cutting holes in the walls and then change my mind later. For now, my plan is to just open up the garage door and let the machine vent outside, but uh, it's raining right now, so that's gonna have to wait a minute. I also found out that the fans on the machine itself are actually quite loud. So once I turn it on, I'm probably not gonna be able to talk to the camera anymore. I'll just, let me show you. It's a little bit like a spaceship taking off, but I can live with that. So I've got the Polar connected to the computer with the Lightburn software. Um, and I went ahead and opened up this test cut file that OhmTech provided on their website. And it's kind of cool because what it's doing is it's giving you a variety of different speeds and power settings to test what the best settings are for the particular material that you're using. And what I especially like about it is that you can see right here how they've set it up, um, where each line is assigned its own power and speed setting. And so that is going to be actually really good instructional information for me in building my own projects in this program. I think that actually answers a lot of questions. So I'm going to turn the machine back on and test this out just on a piece of cardboard first, uh, just to see what happens. And this will be the first time I actually try to engrave something on the machine. Okay, so that wasn't so bad. What this card basically did is it cut out these circles and engraved the uh, gradient down here at different power and speed settings. So this top one is the highest power and the lowest speed, all the way down in the other corner to the lowest power and the fastest speed. So from that, you can kind of coordinate 
what would be the ideal settings to use for this particular material, which here is just two millimeter cardboard. Now I, I know that that's all it takes. And so I'm gonna, I think, I was going to do some eighth inch uh, acrylic as my next test, but um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and cut one of these cards in quarter inch acrylic so that I can figure out the settings to use for making a Raven kit. So I think I got a little ahead of myself. Uh, none of this cut through. And uh, I think that probably this test card that they give you on the uh, Ohmtech website is maybe more general use for all of their machines and perhaps not perfectly suited to this polar unit, which is lower power than most of what they offer. I went to the Facebook group for the Polar and I found this alternate test card which was specifically designed for this machine. Um, and I noticed that the settings are a lot slower and higher power than what that initial test card was offering. So I think that this is probably gonna work better. But just to be safe, I am going to run it on the eighth inch acrylic first, so I don't uh, waste any more of the thicker stuff. So that really didn't work out at all. I think that I might have gotten lucky with cutting the cardboard in that cardboard is just a really easy material to cut through. And really what's going on here is that I'm having some kind of a focus issue. And what makes me think that is that you can see how wide all the lines are as it's trying to cut out the circles, especially. From what I've seen of what this test card is supposed to look like, it's definitely not that. And this couldn't even cut itself out of the sheet of plastic. I had to do a second pass just to get it to separate. And so I think that either the laser is way too close or way too far away from the material. And I'm following all of the directions at this point. So I even went through and double checked everything and tried to cut this same test card again and basically got the same result. So I need to reach out to Ohmtech and try to get some guidance on what's going on here. Okay, it's been two weeks since I last checked in and at this point, everything is mostly sorted. So let me just walk you through what's happened. I got in touch with Ohmtech after I saw that something was wrong with the focus. I had gone through the video that they sent me on how to set the focus a couple of times and it wasn't working right for me. For some reason, the laser head, the, the lens was going just almost right on top of the material when I would use the formula that they provided, which was 17 millimeters minus the thickness of the material. So if you enter that in, then it's supposed to move down to a space somewhere above the material so that the lens focuses the laser to a nice pinpoint onto the material itself. And for whatever reason, that just was giving the wrong results on this machine. So um, it was a lot of back and forth with the tech support and eventually I found out that what you're looking for actually is for the laser head to be five to six millimeters above the material. And that's great because that actually gave me something to work with. So even though nobody's really sure why this one is behaving differently. At least now I know what it should look like. So with that information, I went ahead and performed a ramp test, which I learned about on the Facebook group for the Polar, which is a really helpful group. Um, and the way that a ramp test works is you basically take a sheet of material and you prop it up a little bit on one end and then engrave a line all the way across. And what you're hoping for is that 
the lowest end will be out of focus, too far away from the lens, and the highest end will be out of focus from being too close to the lens, and then somewhere in the middle is the ideal distance. So I did that, and sure enough, I got a wide line at the top end and a wide line at the bottom end, and then somewhere in the middle was the thinnest laser uh, line. And that means that that spot is where it's best focused. And so I measured that with a little uh, triangle ruler that I had to kind of wedge it in and, and find that height. And sure enough, that was five and a half millimeters, which is right in the range that Ohmtech said it would be. And so that means that if I can get that laser head five and a half millimeters above the material, then it should be in focus and I should get a clean cut, a clean engrave. So from there, I just had to do a little subtraction and figure out what the new formula is for me to set the focus on this machine. And for me, that means that I'm doing 12 millimeters minus the height of the material to get the focus height. Because for some reason, this machine is starting out five millimeters lower than it's supposed to. I don't think that's really gonna be an issue, um, but hopefully at some point they can figure out why it's doing that and, and if it's something that I should adjust. My suspicion is that it's somewhere in the communication to and from the computer um, because Ohmtech actually had this exact unit at their facility that they were doing testing and videos with. And so I know that this actual machine is good and works correctly, so whatever's going on is kind of a mystery, but at least everything seems to be working now. So once I had that new information, then I went ahead and cut a new test card, and you can see I squished it to fit where there was still some space left on the um, sheet of material that I had been working with. And this test card came out great. All the lines are nice and clear and sharp, and I got some suggested settings for cutting and engraving on uh, eighth inch acrylic. And that's great. Now I know that everything's working, but I don't really need to do eighth inch material right now. What I'm here for is quarter inch. So I went ahead and loaded up the correct test card that was provided in the Polar user group on Facebook for quarter inch material. And that now gave me um, some actual settings that I can use for cutting through quarter inch acrylic. And now that I knew that I could cut through this quarter inch acrylic, at five millimeters per second, 55% power, I went ahead and cut out a few sets of parts for my animatronic Raven kits. And uh, those came out great. So um, I'm pretty pleased with this. I noticed that it seems like the kerf uh, is maybe a little bit wider than the industrial machine that I was getting these cut on previously. Um, meaning the, the width of the laser dot itself when it's cutting through this material is gonna take away a little bit more. Um, and so some of the smaller holes are a little bit wider than I'm used to seeing, which is something that I could easily adjust for in the file. On this, um, I think that's gonna be fine because these are just pass-through holes for 440 screws. All it's gonna give you is a little extra wiggle room and once everything's tightened down, I think it's gonna be great. I also went ahead and engraved my name onto the body pieces um, because I can do that now. So I'm very pleased with this. Um, we got some, some legs, some wing brackets, the heads, and the bodies. And so that means that soon, I will be able to have some of those Raven kits available. I know a lot of people have been waiting a long time to get their hands on one, so keep an eye out soon. I'm going to update the email list um, when I have news on when that next batch will be released. Uh, you can go to the website. I'll put the link in the description 
and there's an email sign up right on the front page there or on the Raven Kit page. And now, now that I know that I can pull off these Raven Kit parts, I know that I know enough to start prototyping the acrylic parts for the new animatronic parrot kit. And so I will have an update on that very soon. If you liked the Raven kit, then stick around for the parrot because I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I wanna thank Ohmtech for providing the polar laser to me. I know it's been kind of a rough start um, and it's a little unfortunate that it took so long to get cutting, but now that I have sort of the basic information and the settings worked out, I think I can do whatever I want with this thing. <laughs>